Hi, my name is Yvonne Wan. Welcome to my class. Today we're going to learn how to draw Compass MK105, the humanoid from Focus Comic. A humanoid is a robot that resembles a human being. In Focus Comic, Compass MK105 is drawn in the style of realism. Today we're going to learn how to draw this character cheapy style. So the art supplies that you will need today are paper, pencil, eraser, marker and colouring pencils. We're going to be drawing Compass MK105 in a sitting pose. This pose can be very helpful in drawing any character you want. So let's get started. First I'd like you to draw a circle for the head and then I'd like you to draw the side cheek within the circle. Next I'd like you to draw a hairline like this. This separates the forehead of the character with the glass skull. Next we're going to draw two eyes like this, eyebrows, nose and a mouth. Feel free to revise the lines accordingly. Next we're going to divide the skull like this. Next we're going to give Compass a round microphone in the area of the ear because he is a robot. Next we're going to draw a metal chest like this. And then we're going to make the skull look like glass by drawing two shiny lines like this. Now we're going to draw the Secret Lineage logo on the chest like this. And then we're going to put shoulder plates like this and some wires and fans in between the joints. Next we're going to add some screws and bolts to the neck. And then we're going to draw the body piece. Compass has a glass belt. Compass has a hard drive in the center part of his body. Next we're going to draw the legs like this and then the feet and then the arms and hands like this. Once you have done this we're going to add plates to the armor like this. It's going to look like stripes except the edges are kind of jagged. Next I want you to keep working on the hands so it looks like he's resting his hand on the ground. Next I would like you to add some plates on the pants like this and then add a radioactive kind of logo on the shoes. Next, I'd like you to sign your name and the year and write Compass MK105 on the side. Now that you have finished your drawing, I would like you to take a black marker and draw over the pencil lines. Please remember to use an eraser to erase the pencil lines after you have lined your art with marker. We are now going to learn about colouring. So I would like to introduce you to the use of colouring blenders when it comes to colouring your art. If you apply the blender to your colours, you will notice that the whites will start to vanish and the colours will become more smooth and solid. If you apply the blender on several colours, the colours will blend nicely, creating a gradation of colours and create new tones in the process. Blenders can make your art appear more smooth and realistic. And now I'm going to introduce you to the use of burnishers when it comes to colouring your art. A burnisher keeps your whites white. You can apply it as an undercoat or an overcoat. As an undercoat you can use it to create brick lines for example and then colour in the bricks without needing to colour around it. If you want to create a shiny effect, you can choose to use the burnisher as an overcoat. So there are different effects you can achieve by the way you handle your pencil. So if you apply light pressure, the colours will come out lighter. If you apply medium pressure, it will appear a little bit darker. If you apply a lot of pressure, then it will be extremely dark and more solid. If you have trouble applying light pressure to your pencil, you can handle the pencil from the top. You will notice the colours will be a lot lighter as a result of the way you're holding the pencil. 
The directions of your strokes is important, so I highly recommend that you use one direction when you are shading. If you apply your strokes in different directions, you will notice that the colours will be inconsistent as a texture. Another stroke you might want to consider is um, applying cross hatching, and that involves colouring in one direction for the first layer and then the second layer you do the opposite direction and that way you would be able to cover the full area very thoroughly and have a more solid appearance in uh, pigmentation. Another texture you might want to consider is circular motions. This provides a different texture and can be very useful uh, depending on what texture you prefer. Another technique you might want to try is layering. You can choose two different colours and put them on top of each other, creating new colour tones. So I'd like to teach you how to do highlights. First of all, you need to have a light source so you can determine which part of the drawing should have uh, a brighter side and which side should have a darker side. And you can have the highlight using white or you can use a burnisher. And um, here I'm just using grey to depict shadow. So now that I've taught you some basics uh, when it comes to colouring techniques, I would like you to apply everything that you've learned to the drawing. So just to summarise, the directions of the strokes matter, the pressure that you apply matters, the amount of layers that you apply also matters, and it's also important that you factor in highlights and shadows using whites and darker colours and the burnisher too and um, always use a blender if you have that available to you because it's always going to make your art pop this concludes today's class i look forward to seeing you next week bye